Next area I looked to was one I was really skeptical about. That was the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies in the life of Jesus. Uh, there are about 191 ancient predictions in the Old Testament of the Bible that point forward toward the Messiah who would be the Savior of Israel in the world. It was as if God gave a thumbprint and said, here's the thing. You're going to have people claiming to be the Messiah. Whoever m matches this thumbprint, whoever fits these, this thumbprint, who fulfills these prophecies, you'll know that is the one I have sent to be the Savior of Israel in the world. And they said, Jesus did it, so he must be the guy. And I'd say, Yo, you know, come on, give me a break. There's got to be some explanation for that. I'd say, you know, maybe Jesus intentionally maneuvered his life in such a way that he fulfilled these on purpose to fool people into thinking he's the Messiah. I thought that made sense. And then I looked at the prophecies and I thought, well, that actually it doesn't hold water. Why? Because Jesus couldn't have arranged his ancestry. He couldn't have arranged his place of birth, his manner of birth. He couldn't have arranged, you know, in Daniel chapter 9, written hundreds of years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, it tells you the exact moment in history when the Messiah would come. How did he arrange that? He couldn't have arranged that his legs would remain unbroken on the cross. He couldn't have arranged for the gambling for his clothing. You know, there's so much stuff. I thought, eh, that doesn't explain it. So I came up with another explanation. I said, well, um, what if it's not that hard to fulfill these prophecies? Maybe lots of people have done it through history. Maybe it's not that difficult. And maybe the only reason we remember Jesus is he had a better public relations agent than other people. So we remember him. So I thought, you know, maybe it's not hard. Well, then I read a book by Dr. Peter Stoner. And Dr. Stoner is a uh, professor of mathematics and science at a college out here in California. And several years ago, Professor Stoner wrote a book called Science Speaks. And the premise of that book is very interesting. What he did is he gathered around him 600 graduate students in mathematics and other students. And he said, let's come up with what we all agree upon to be very conservative estimates for the probabilities of any human being throughout history fulfilling eight of these ancient prophecies. And then they, they came up with that, and then they just ran the mathematics to determine what is the likelihood that any human being throughout history could fulfill just eight of these ancient prophecies. And it turned out, as they computed it, there's one chance in a hundred million billion. Now, that's a big number. hundred million billion. I, I'm trying to get my mind around that number. How, you know, how do I put that into context? Well, at the time, my wife and I were doing some ceramic tiling in our bathroom, and I cut a piece of ceramic tile one and a half inches by one and a half inches square. Question, what are the odds any human being throughout history could fill just eight of these ancient prophecies? It would be like me taking tile this big and tiling this entire studio, and then tiling the rest of California, and then tiling the rest of the United States, and Canada, and Mexico, and South America, and Asia, and Africa, and Australia. Every square inch of land on the planet would be tiled with tile this big. And on the bottom of one, face down so you wouldn't know which one, would be a gold star. What are the odds any human being could fulfill just eight of these prophecies? It would be like me choosing one person from this audience and saying, you can, you can travel the world. Go to Rio de Janeiro. Go to Beijing. Go to Moscow. Go to Rome. But that whole time, you can bend down only one time. And you can pick up only one square. What are the odds it would be the square with the star on the bottom? The same odds that any human being throughout history could fulfill just eight of these ancient prophecies. And I thought, wow, that's pretty impressive. But then Peter Stoner didn't stop there. Peter Stoner and his students came up with conservative estimates, ran the mathematics. What are the odds that any human being throughout history could fulfill 48 of these prophecies? And it turned out there's one chance... In a trillion, 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 trillion. This is a big number. This is this is a ten with 157 zeros after it. And I'm thinking, how do I get my mind around this number? So, began to do some computations. I called up a friend of mine, who's a scientist. I said, how big is an atom? He said, well, Lee, an atom's very small. I said, well, how small? I said, Lee, an atom's so small, it takes a million atoms lined up, but to equal the width of a human hair. I said, that's small. I said, I told you it's small. I said, okay. So then I called up the scientists at the Argonne National Laboratory in Batavia, Illinois. And I said, I know there's a shot in the dark, but has any scientist ever come up and estimated the number of atoms in the universe? You know, not the solar system, the universe. And they said, as a matter of fact, Lee, a scientist has calculated that number. 
And I thought, you know, it's your tax dollars at work probably. You know, it's, a, it's like one of those million dollar grants. I don't know, estimate the number of atoms in the universe. And, and the guy did it. So question, what are the odds that any human being throughout history could fulfill 48 of these prophecies? It would be like taking one atom and spray painting it red. It would be the Dennis Rodman of atoms. Remember Dennis? He's, just phrased, he's one of my neighbors now in Lisbon, Orange County. And it's a whole different message. Oh. <laughs> you spray paint one atom red. And you put it in a space equal to not just the whole universe, but in a space equal to a trillion, 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 billion universes the size of our universe. And then you take one person and you give them a spaceship and say, you can fly among the trillion, 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 billion universes, but you can stop your spaceship one time. And you can open up your little porthole and you can stick out your tweezers and you can pull in one atom. What would be the odds it would be the Dennis Rodman atom? The same odds that any human being throughout history could fulfill 48 of these prophecies. And you know what? Jesus did it against every odd. In fact, I came up with my own estimates, ran my own numbers. They were even, they were even further out than Peter Stoner's numbers when I calculated them. And I'm thinking, he did it against every mathematical odd? In fact, Jesus himself said, Luke 24, verse 44, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And it was fulfilled only in him. I mean, the, the pure mathematics says it's impossible, but he did it. And I began to think, wait a minute, if I was a business person and some guy came up to me and said, Lee, I got a deal for you. Here's the deal. You got to invest everything you own, your whole life into this deal. And if it goes, and, and if it goes south, if it, if it fails, you lose everything. You lose your life. You lose everything. But if this deal succeeds, you not only get all the riches in the universe, but you get eternal life with God. And by the way, your chances of failure is one chance in a trillion, 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 trillion. I would be an idiot not to invest in that deal because the pure mathematics tell me I can't lose. And I began to think, well, wait a minute. Am I not a fool for not investing my life in Jesus Christ? When the mathematics tell me the odds of him being the one sent by God are so staggering thought, man, this is something i got to take seriously. 